Hello, and welcome to Game Theory. I'm Professor Naomi Utkoff of the United States Naval Academy. In this video, we'll study two finite horizon bargaining games as a prelude to our study of Rubinstein's infinite horizon alternating offer bargaining game. The ultimatum game is the basic building block of Rubinstein's infinite horizon alternating offer bargaining game. The goals of this video are to introduce the ultimatum game, explain how to put copies of it together, and find subgame perfect Nash equilibria of these finite horizon bargaining games. Finally, we'll observe a pattern in the associated payoffs. We therefore begin our discussion of bargaining with a discussion of the finite building blocks. Here is half of the building block, the dictator game we played on the very first day of class. Player A divides a pie, a dollar, between A and B, offering to keep A1 for herself and let B take the remainder of the pie, 1 minus A1. A maximizes A's payoff, i.e. A1 equal to 1, leaving B with 1 minus A1 equal to 0 in subgame perfect Nash equilibrium. The ultimatum game is the dictator game plus B's response to A's offer. B either accepts A's offer, in which case A receives A1 and B receives 1 minus A1, or else B rejects A's offer, in which case the game ends and both players receive 0. Now, let's find the subgame perfect Nash equilibrium by backwards induction. B accepts if B's payoff from accepting, 1 minus A1, is at least as good as B's payoff from rejecting, 0. B accepts if 1 minus A1 is greater than or equal to 0. You might be wondering why the inequality isn't strict, i.e., why B doesn't hold out for at least a sliver of the pie. B would certainly accept a sliver, but if A1 is equal to 1 so that B gets 0 either way, both accept and reject are best responses, hence the weak inequality. A makes B a minimally acceptable offer, which we represent by 1 minus A1 equals 0. Rearranging, A1 equals 1. We're at the top of the tree, so backwards induction is complete. The subgame perfect Nash equilibrium is A1 equals 1, and B accepts all offers. Our last example of finite bargaining is two rounds of the ultimatum game stuck together. There are two important innovations. First, look at the payoffs at the very end of the tree if A accepts B's offer. A receives not A2, but delta A2 and B receives not 1 minus A2, but delta times 1 minus A2. Delta is the so-called discount factor. Delta is strictly greater than 0 and strictly less than 1. The discount factor represents that a fixed quantity of stuff, pi, money, and so on, is less valuable the longer one has to wait for it. $10 tomorrow is worth less than $10 right this very second. A slice of pie tomorrow is not as tasty as that same slice of pie right now. The players begin the game bargaining over pie or a dollar or some such. If they can't reach an agreement in the first round, i.e. if B rejects A's offer, come the second round, the dollar is worth less because of the delay in dividing it. In the first round, A offers shares of a dollar, A1 to A, and 1 minus A1 to B. In the second round, B offers shares of delta dollars, A2 to A and 1 minus A2 to B. If A accepts B's offer, A's payoff is A's share, A2, multiplied by the value of the pi, delta. B's payoff is B's share, 1 minus A2, multiplied by the value of the pi, delta. Second, note that the players take turns offering. In the first round, a offers, and B either accepts or rejects. As in the ultimatum game, if B accepts, the players receive their respective shares of the pie, and the game ends. If B rejects, it instead becomes B's turn to offer and A's turn to accept or reject that offer. If A rejects, each player receives zero and the game ends. If A accepts, the players receive their respective shares and the game ends. Now, let's do backwards induction to find the subgame perfect Nash equilibrium. A accepts if A's payoff from accepting, 
delta A2 is at least as good as A's payoff from rejecting, zero. Division by delta is legal, because delta is never zero. B makes A a minimally acceptable offer, which we represent by A2 equals zero. A accepts if A's payoff from accepting, delta A2, is at least as good as A's payoff from rejecting, zero. Division by delta is legal because delta is never zero. B makes A a minimally acceptable offer, which we represent by A2 equals zero. Now, B accepts if B's payoff from accepting, one minus A1, is at least as good as B's payoff from rejecting, delta times one minus A2. Since A2 is equal to zero, B accepts if one minus A1 is greater than or equal to delta. A makes B a minimally acceptable offer, which we represent by one minus A1 is equal to zero. Rearranging, A1 equals one minus delta. We're at the top of the tree, so backwards induction is complete. The subgame perfect Nash equilibrium is that A plays A1 equals one minus delta and accepts if A2 is greater than or equal to zero. B plays except if one minus A1 is greater than or equal to delta and offers A2 equals zero. This table summarizes the path of play and payoffs associated to the subgame perfect Nash equilibria of the one and two round bargaining games. The next two rows of the table extrapolate based on the derivations we did for the one and two round bargaining games. We could do backwards induction for the three or four or more round games, but we won't do so in this video. We could, in fact, just keep tacking on another round of the ultimatum game after every rejection. This alternating play of the ultimatum game is Rubenstein's Infinite Horizon alternating offer bargaining game. Thanks so much for watching this video about finite horizon bargaining. In the next video, we'll introduce Rubenstein's Infinite Horizon alternating offer bargaining game and use stationarity to derive its subgame perfect Nash equilibrium.